All right, we got a ton of rain over the past couple days, so figured we'd come check out the status of the small little local lake that's the closest to the house. Just see if they got any stain down here on the south end of it, because typically in the winter time, which that's a good pivot point. We're going to be talking about some winter baits here in just a second, but in the winter, if it gets stained up in some of these lakes, the fishing gets really, really good. So, Miss Hunter, give us a January bass fishing tip. That's gonna be the theme of this video, by the way. I'm gonna give you all my top five January bass fishing tips, so let us know one. What you got? When you're on the boat in January, always wear something over your ears so your ears don't get too cold. <laughs> That's something she's been dealing with a ton recently. Get you a nice pair of earmuffs is what she's telling you. Number one tip you can get, keep your ears safe when you're on the lake in January. So I'm about to sit down, jump into this. My top five best bass fishing tips for January. These are what I live by. And I'm in the south, so it doesn't get quite as cold as some of the country, but these are my top five. And look at my new cup. All right, so I found me a little spot to kind of break this down for y'all. This is just kind of the tips that I go by. Now, I know that some of these are not the optimal, like, path to catching as many bass as possible, but these are the ways that I've caught some of my biggest fish I've ever caught, and I've caught a lot of really, really big fish in the January month specifically. I think probably half of my, like, eight-pound fish that I've ever caught in my life have probably been in January. So, caught a bunch of really big ones this time of year. And these are some of the tips I try to use. So, we'll break it down to five pretty much basic principles. Number one, for all my lakes around here, I would say go big. And what that means is this is kind of like the summertime where the fish want a bigger meal than average. Now, that kind of goes a different way if you're fishing a lot of, like, Highland Reservoir, super deep lakes, lakes with herring, lakes with a lot of spotted bass, you still want to go ultra finesse. But for me, fishing around in Alabama, a lot of these river systems, specifically targeting largemouth, I'm going to want to go big. And so, one perfect example of that, January is probably like the jerkbait month. I think everybody knows January, February, March, that's like whenever you throw a jerkbait the most. And in the fall, October, November, I'm usually throwing a smaller jerk bait. This is the Spro McStick 95. This is the one that I'm typically throwing in the fall whenever they're feeding on bait more than anything else. Now, in January, I'm gonna switch back to the big one. I'm gonna throw the big three hook bait, and I really like those three hooks because a lot of times the fish are a little bit more apt to just come up here and barely clamp it onto the bait, whereas the fish that bite this bait in the fall, sometimes I do only hook them one way but they really seem to eat the bait better they seem to attack it a little bit more like a little bit harder in the winter in january they kind of come up and nip it they kind of swat at it they just kind of pick at it so i really want to have three hooks on there but i want to go bigger and i want to throw this bait the same exact places i just want a bigger profile bait because those big fish that are moving up kind of kind of suspended kind of waiting they know the days are starting to get longer i think the winter solstice is like december the 22nd after that, the days start getting longer. Those fish are starting to suspend closer and closer to the spawning areas. So that's why I want to throw these bigger baits but whenever they're moving up. Another thing that I'll do this time of year is I'll go to a really big rubber jig. So this right here is the ace head with a rubber, with actually with a rubber skirt on it and a really big chunk on it. So this is a really big jig. This is the kind of jig I'm going to be flipping around bluff walls. I'm going to flip it around docks. I'm going to flip it in lay downs. I'm going to flip it everywhere. It's just a really big profile flat rubber jig and that goes to the same principle. When those fish are moving up in the shallow cover, this, this is primarily better if you have a little bit of stain and those fish stop suspending quite as much and get on the isolated cover close to spawning flats. I'm going to go flip something extremely big and extremely bulky around a lot of these places. So remember that. You kind of want to be polarizing. If you're fishing for largemouth, go extremely big because there's really big fish moving up trying to, you know, kind of get in that pre-spawn phase. Even though we're a little bit early for that, they're still going to kind of get close to it. And then if you're fishing a lot of spotted bass, herring type of lakes, you still want to go ultra finesse. So it's kind of a polarizing deal this time of year. Now, one thing that I want to say about these types of baits is, and all of the baits, don't overlook the obvious stuff. This is tip number two. The most obvious places in the lake, that's where you want to be fishing a lot of your time whenever the fish are moving, migrating, suspended, stuff like that. So if you got bridges, you got obvious road beds, you've got shoals, you got like super flat, obvious main lake points that run way out into the middle. Like I'm talking about the most obvious stuff in the lake. That's the stuff you want to be rotating on this time of year. You don't, you don't drive past the most obvious main lake point this time of year. This is where the big ones that live in those areas, this is when they get the most easiest to catch. So the most obvious stuff in the lake can typically be where you catch some of the biggest fish. So throw these big baits around the most obvious stuff in the lake. So for tip number two is with all 
the bulkiness that you add, lighten your baits up a little bit to give them a slower fall. So this right here, this is number three? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've said two so far, so this is number three. Lighten it up. Well, what that means is, this is a really big bulky bait, but it's only got a half ounce head on it. So that means this bait falls extremely slowly. So whenever I pitch this thing under the tip of a dock that's in eight feet of water, it falls super, super slow. So if that fish is suspended four feet down, it's gonna just hang in his face just a little bit longer. It doesn't just shoot by me and go to the bottom. So I wanna lighten up my baits. If I'm flipping around a worm, I'll go to an eighth ounce. I'll go to a sixteenth ounce weight and flip it around isolated cover. If I'm throwing a swim bait, I'll really like downsize my head so that I can keep it really slowly reeled by those suspended fish. I just want to lighten up almost everything that I do this time of year. And with that, I'll typically throw my wind-in baits, like crankbaits, spinnerbaits, stuff like that. I'll typically throw that on a slower gear ratio reel in the dead of winter. Talk about December, January, February, I'll go down to a 6 to 1, 6.6 .6 to 1, all that stuff. That's the only time of the year that I really throw them on that slow of a reel. But this is the only time of year I do it. I lighten stuff up and I slow stuff down a little bit, but I keep that big profile. Now, also, one thing to remember is this time of year, the days are shorter than average. Like we have really short days in January compared to the rest of the year. That means that the sun is not shining as, you know, like there's just less sunlight and there's less light penetration actually into the water. So the fish can't see quite as good in January through the water as they can in like the middle of summer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brighten up most of my lures. So if, I'm, if I have any stained water at all, like I'm talking about a couple feet of visibility, whatever, I'm gonna really brighten that bait up more than I would in the summer or other times of the year. So tip number four is to really, really brighten up your baits that you're fishing with. Now, if you're on a crystal clear body of water, yeah, you still wanna stay natural. But if you have any like tinge to the water, stain to the water at all, you really wanna go bright because those fish just don't have the light penetration they have in the summer. So they can't see quite as well. So you really wanna brighten up your baits. Now, one thing that I want to mention is draw power, it has a lot of effect on them in the wintertime. Now, this is whenever a lot of times I'm going to want to go with, this is tip number five, by the way, I'm going to want to go with a bait that has more thump instead of is more visually like pleasing to the bass. So this giant big bulky jig, it's got this big trailer on it, this big, it's got a giant profile in the water. The fish are really going to be able to feel that from a long way away. I'm gonna do the same thing with a lot of my baits that I'm winding. So this is whenever I'm gonna to wanna to go to a Colorado style spinnerbait instead of a double willow leaf spinnerbait. These are both Lost River lures spinnerbaits. But, but the point I'm getting at here is this spinnerbait right here, the double willow, this is still gonna imitate the shad in my lake better because it's still like these actual leaves look like the shad that's in the lake and it's got the white skirt on it. It just really imitates shad extremely well. But in the winter, a lot of times I'll actually go to a bait like this that might not actually look as much like the shad as, as the other one, but it has more thump to it. So it's gonna be able to draw those fish from further away. So especially if we have some stained water or you know the fish is super sluggish, this bait just slows down. It's, it, you reel this bait a whole lot slower because this these blades catch so much more water and you have to reel this bait slower. I throw it on six to one gear ratio reel and it has more thump. So whenever this water's cooler, it's a little bit more dense. The fish use their lateral line a little bit more. Like I said, they can't see quite as well because there's not as much light penetration. So the bass start to use their lateral line. So I'm gonna start, wanna, I'm going to start using baits to have a little bit more thump to them and can draw those fish from a little bit further or really pique those fish's interest because it has a little more vibration. So even though this still imitates the shad a little bit better, I'm gonna go to this one a lot of times in the winter just because it has the properties that excel this time of year. So those are just some things to remember. Just remember, go big or super small. Don't overlook the obvious. And a lot of times the most obvious thing is fish around the bait. Number three would be brighten it up, lighten your baits up. That means slower falls, slower, slower reels, all that type of stuff. And then kind of you want to go with thump overlooks a lot of times in the winter. So that's my top five January bass fishing tips. Hope y'all enjoyed that. Hope y'all, you know, kind of take hunter's advice. Also, stay warm out there. Get you some striker clothes. Stay warm out there on the water, even though it ain't been real hard to stay warm this winter in particular. But hope y'all enjoyed that. Let's go ride around and see if we can find some stain on the small little local lake.